the Bible offers to us how to achieve good success, not just success, but good success. And our focus text to capture all that this program is all about is taken from Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. When we live according to its writings and we desire to do what is written there, the Bible says the outcome of our lives will be good success. So I'll be taking us through by the Spirit of God on a journey of talking about parables in the Bible to communicate divine wisdom, to communicate divine principles by which we should live our lives. And I'll be sharing with us from the first parable of the parable of the sower. Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 to 11 and verse 15. And it says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now let's look at verse 15, Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. It says, For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. I'm going to share with us about two lessons. The sower in that parable is God who sows the word. The word is Jesus and our heart is the soil. So we see the sower, we see the seed, and then we see the soil. So if God is going to change your life, if he's going to change your circumstance, if he's going to change your situation for good, he's going to present himself to you as the sower what will he sow he will sow his word the word of god is the tool of transformation and how we interact with the word speaks to our heart being the soil that eventually causes the growth of the word to produce fruits of blessings of transformation of promotion of healing of greatness name it two lessons number one is that what will change your life has to be searched out what will change your life has to be searched out you must be desirous of finding something beyond what ordinary eyes can see something that is common that is where the potency of the transformation of your life comes in. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. So if you are going to reign and rule in life, in your sphere of influence, in your field or in your life's endeavor as a king, it doesn't matter what sphere of influence you find yourself, either in the family or in ministry or in the media or in entertainment or in politics or in the economy you must realize that god requires you to search out his mysteries for you to dominate in that sphere of influence so what will change your life what will make you a king a force to be reckoned with has to be searched out the disciples came to Jesus in the text we read in Matthew chapter 13, from verse 10 to 11. They came and they said, Master, what does this parable mean? Those who were not coming to him to ask did not get the privilege of knowing what the mystery behind the parable meant. So the challenge God is throwing to you today is be inquisitive. Don't be a simple individual who takes life at face value. You must learn to search. You must learn to inquire. Have a questioning mind. 
things don't just happen physically. When things happen and they get your attention, it is telling you you should find out what made them happen. Lord, why is this happening? Or you want to ask a superior, somebody who seems to know better, who seems to have more information than you do. You want to take time to ask, I don't understand this. And I feel there is something that I need to understand. It is when you understand that you can stand above, that you can rise above. If you take life as, oh, whatever will be, will be. Let what is happening just happen. Maybe that's how God wants it. Then you would not rise. It is the one who is armed with information and revelation of the information that eventually becomes a king on the face of the earth. My challenge to you is, have an inquisitive inquiry mind have a questioning mind it is the quality of question you ask that will determine the quality of answers you get and it is the kind of people you approach to to ask question that will also determine the quality of answer you get and the quality of answer you get will ultimately shape your life and transform your life the second lesson i want us to learn from this parable the first part of it is that it is always your choice for your life to be changed and your life cannot change until the state of your heart changes and what is the gateway to your heart the gateway or access to your heart are your eyes and your ears the state of your life the condition of your life is a matter of your choice it is not just about what is happening. It is what you accept to happen to you. Matthew chapter 13 verse 15. It says, For these people's heart is waxed gross. Their heart has grown callous. Another translation says, Their heart has been hardened. They've made up their mind that their heart will not receive the information will not be inquisitive, will not ask questions. They've made up their minds that their lives will not change. You must learn to ask the question, how will this situation affect me? Or how will this word affect me? And the question, what should I do with what I have heard? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Revelation 3, 20, Behold, I stand at the door. It says, I knock. If any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So it is always your choice to allow God's word to transform your heart. It is always your choice to choose that what God is saying is meant for you and it is supposed to help you have a transformed life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Romans 12, 2, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to the environment, to the space that you find yourself, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do you do that? It is that you give access to God's word in your heart. When you hear the word, don't close your heart. When the word is spoken to you, when you see things happening around you, interpret them based on what the word of God says. And that is where your transformation begins from. And of course, where your good success lies. So when you see, when you hear, when your heart perceives, when your heart desires knowledge, desires wisdom, it says you will be converted. Your life will be transformed. Your situation will change. And healing virtues of God will flow into your life automatically, into your business, into your marriage, into your relationship. When you allow the word of God gain access into your heart by you believing it and by you living with it to observe to do according to what is written it says you will transform your life you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success thank you very much for joining us for today's broadcast on good success i believe this world will never leave you the same as you appropriate it into your heart and into your life in the name of jesus don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video share it around and be a part of this community God bless you. See you next time.